What means the term Easter itself? It is not a Christian name. It bears its Chaldean origin on its very forehead. Easter is nothing else than Astarte, one of the titles of Beltis, the Queen of Heaven, whose name, as pronounced by the people of Nineveh, was evidently identical with that now in common use in this country. That name, as found by Layard, on the Assyrian monuments, is Ishtar. Ishtar was one of the most prominent of the deities of the Akkadian and Assyrian pantheon. She was the Assyrian goddess of love. She was the Ashtoreth of the Jews or Hebrews. She is the planetary Venus, and in general features, corresponds with the classical goddess of love. Her name Ishtar is that by which she was known in Assyria, and the same name prevailed, with slight modifications, among the Semite nations generally. In Babylonia the goddess was known as Nana, which seems to be the Nania of the second book of Maccabees, and the Nani, of the modern Syrians. She was the goddess of the moon, or moon-faced goddess. The crescent was supposed to have adorned her crown or diadem, hence she was called the moon-faced goddess, or the goddess with the horned face. She may be identified with Easter of the Germans, or Easter. To this goddess our Saxon or German ancestors sacrificed in April, which was therefore by them styled, Easter Monoth. And from thence arose our word Easter, which the Saxons retained after their conversion to Christianity, so that our Easter day is nothing more nor less than Ishtar's day. Easter has no connection with the mythical Christ. The word is usually derived from Easter, the Saxon goddess of the East the dawn, spring and resurrection. She is probably to be identified with Ishtar. The Assyrian goddess of love, fertility, and generation. Ishtar corresponded both in name and attributes with the Astarte or Ashtoreth of the Phoenicians and Syrians. Like the Greek Aphrodite and the Roman Venus, she was the queen of love and beauty, and presided over all reproduction, of animals and plants as well as of man. The Easter egg, symbolizes her fecundity and power of initiating new life. Ishtar was fabled to have, descended into hell, and to have there, been one by one divested of her adornments, but she returned again with all her beauteous attire. This transparent myth of the resurrection of life in spring was recorded on tablets above a thousand years before the Christian era. Jeremiah, 718 alludes to the Jewish women kneading their dough to make cakes to the Queen of Heaven, a practice they had learnt in Babylonia, and which survives in our Easter buns. The Spring Festival celebrates the procreative power of nature, the bursting of life from the underworld, and the myth of Ishtar, is both more appropriate and poetical than that of Christ. Comparatively few readers realize that the cross was of heathen origin, and a religious symbol of the lowest order, and that it was not adopted as a symbol of Christianity until the church was well paganized. Its origin lies in the shadows of the prehistoric period. It was a religious symbol in the Asiatic, Egyptian, Grecian, Roman, Druidic, and Central American heathenism. It originated in the lowest department of sun worship cults. Ishtar the Assyrian Venus, was represented as holding a staff, the upper end of which was in the form of a Latin cross. The festival of the resurrection, was in early Christian times, known by various names, one of these was Pasch Sunday, another was Goddess Sunday. By the Anglo-Saxons it was first called Easter Day, according to some authors from the Saxon verb Oster, to rise others deriving the term from the goddess who used to be worshipped at that season. The fact is, that the Saxon verb itself is derived from the name of the goddess, the Phoenician Istati, the personified moon, and who is identical with Isis, Luna, Venus Genetri. The word Oster, was used in the sense of to rise, from the fable of the goddess having risen from the sea. The real signification of the word Istati, is fecundity. Easter is a festival of Phoenician origin, called Istati or Ashtaroth. Easter is the first Sunday after the first full moon occurs after the 21st of March. As the first constellation of the equinox, 
born at the dawn of astrology, 4380 BC according to some calculations, Taurus denotes the primordial energy sacred to the lunar divinities and to the propitiatory gods of rain and fertility. Assimilated to matter, the earth element, and the sensuality of the receptive principles of nature, this sign was placed under the protection of the great mothers of archaic cults, such as Isis and Ishtar. Ap. Is the Vedic Sanskrit term for water, which in classical Sanskrit only occurs in the plural apas, sometimes reanalyzed as a thematic singular, apa. Whence Hindi ap. The term is from by, ap water. The Indo-Iranian word also survives as the Persian word for water, ab, for example in Punjab, from Panjab five waters. In archaic abloyuting contractions, the laryngeal of the Pyrut, remains visible in Vedic Sanskrit, for example Pratipa, against the current, from Protiapo. In Tamil, that means water, and has references in poetry. The life-giving rain after a thunderstorm originated from the bull. In Sanskrit, the words for bull and rain both come from the same root, meaning both to water and to impregnate. April the fourth month in the year. The word is derived Aprilis, of Aperio, I open, because in this month the earth begins to open her bosom, for the production of vegetables. The sun enters the sign Taurus on the 20th of this month. Taurus the bull attracts the sun, who sitting on his horn, in triumph rides, and swiftly on his April course is born. As for the month of April, the full moon is known as the Egg Moon. Likely inspired by all the wildlife, namely birds, finally laying eggs after a long and barren winter. Since April is also the month of Easter, it seems like a no-brainer that this month's full moon would be associated with an egg. The moon goddess we must now consider the most prominent aspect in which Isis appeared to the ancient world. She was emphatically the lunar goddess, the wife of Osiris the sun. The moon deities of other nations than Egypt are probably adaptations or reflections of her. They also declare, Isis to be the moon, and say that such statues of her, as are horned were made in imitation of the crescent. Ishtar wedded to the beautiful sun god, descended to Hades. Astarte, queen of heaven, with crescent horns. Ashtoreth, or Ashtaroth, a Phoenician goddess moon. Ishtar and Shamas, the sun god were children of Sin. It is from this name of Sin, Sina, for the moon deity, that Mount Sinai, and the desert of Sin were named. The sister goddess is worshipped by European peoples, agreeing with Isis in many of her attributes. Ut, Infra, were also represented with the crescent moon. So Artemis was by Cornus, Regina Sidorum, and as Luna, Phoebe, Selene, Hecate, is thus represented. In Egypt the Ark was oftentimes carried in procession, as it was also in Canaan, and many other countries, in it were the emblems of procreation, too sacred to be shown openly to the people, it was frequently represented as an egg, and on the monuments of that country the bull god Apis, or Osiris, is seen breaking it with his horn, thus figuring the escape of nature from the icy bondage of winter. The release of the god from his prison was at the same time as the Easter of the Christians, both of a common origin, and the Easter egg, still used by the Christians is but the egg, or Ark of Osiris. The cakes offered to Astarte may still be traced in those eaten by the Christians on Good Friday. The signs of the zodiac explain much of this ancient superstition. Taurus, or the bull, was the sign in which the sun was, and under which he was worshipped at the spring equinox, and this is the reason why Osiris, was represented by the bull, Apis, and Isis by a woman with, a cow's head. The bull Apis was marked on the shoulder with a crescent, symbol of the moon or, Ark. The goddess thus figured in the tree and in the ark was represented in nearly every country with a crescent moon over her head, Osiris, indeed, 
was said to have escaped to the moon, and this crescent is to be seen in many of the ancient pictures of the Virgin Mary. Ishtar. The adored virgin goddess of Babylonia, was regarded in the same light, and among her titles were, Queen of Heaven, Mother of Gods, the Celestial Mother, the Holder of the Scepter, etc. Dr. Inman, in Ancient Faiths says, if there were any other evidences required to prove the identity of the modern virgin and child with the Ishtar of Babylon, the Re, of Assyria, the Isis of Egypt, the Sarah, of Hindustan, the Seers of Greece, and the Venus of Cyprus, we should find it in the style of ornaments which crowd the Roman churches on the continent. Amongst others, the most conspicuous are the sun and moon in conjunction, precisely as we see them on the ancient coins of Greece and Babylon, wherein the sun represents the triad Mahadeva, and the moon is natural consort. In addition to the virgin mothers of gods already given, there may be added, Alcmene, mother of Alcides, Samel, mother of the Egyptian Bacchus, Minerva, mother of the Grecian Bacchus, Prudence, mother of one of the Hercules, Shingman, mother of you, Chinese, Menu, mother of Jesus, all held to be chaste virgins and believed in many hundreds of years before the Virgin Mary or, her child was born. The number of goddesses and females not particularly virgins who gave birth to gods is almost without end. Asta, meant a fire star, like Asta in Greek, hence Asterita, Astarta. Ashtrit, Astarte. The Astuas were heaven's bright lights, the Lampras rulers of the greatest of poets, and Astarta was their Arabian and Phoenician queen, the queen of heaven to whom the Israelites used to make cakes. Ishtar is a cuneiform word signifying star of love, or queen of stars, occasionally applied to the Virgin Mary. The zodiacal Virgo is held to represent the Assyrian Venus, Ishtar. In the doctrine relating to the Virgin Mary as held by the Church of Rome, there is a remarkable resemblance to the teaching of the ancients respecting the female constantly associated with the Trian male deity. Her names and titles are many, and though diversified, mostly pointing to the same idea. Some of these are as follows. The Virgin. Conceiving and bringing forth from her own inherent power. The wife of Bel Nimrod, the wife of Ashur, the wife of Nin. She is called Malta, Mulita, or Milita, or Inuta, Bilta, or Bilda, Nipruta, Ishtar, Re, Alita, Ilissa, Betis, Ashtorith, Astarte, Saruha, Nana, Azura. Amongst other names she is known as Hathor, Deasaria, Artemis, Aphrodite, Danath, Danat, Rhea, Dimida, Seers, Diana, Minerva, Juno, Venus, Isis, Cybele, Cenebor, Seben, Venus Urania, Gay, Hera. In modern times she appears as the Virgin Mary and her son. She was the queen of fecundity, or fertility, queen of the lands, the beginning of heaven and earth, queen of all the gods, goddess of war and battle, the holder of the scepter, the beginning of the beginning, the one great queen, the queen of the spheres, the Virgo of the zodiac, the celestial virgin. Time, in whose womb all things are born. She is represented in various ways, and specially as a nude woman, carrying an infant in her arms. Ishtar is Astarte, Artemis, Hathor, and a host of later deifications of motherhood, culminating in our own time in that of the Virgin Mary. In Indur Subba, the south entrance of the caves of El Laura, may be seen to this day the figure of Indra's wife, Indrani, sitting with her infant son God, 
pointing the finger to heaven with the same gesture as the Italian Madonna and child in pagan and Christian symbolism, the author gives a figure from a medieval woodcut, the like of which we have seen by dozens in old Psalters, in which the Virgin Mary, with her infant, is represented as the Queen of Heaven, on the crescent moon, emblem of virginity. Being before the sun, she almost eclipses its light. Than this, nothing could more completely identify the Christian mother and child with Isis and Horus, Ishtar, Venus, Juno, and a host of other pagan goddesses, who have been called Queen of Heaven, Queen of the Universe, Mother of God, Spouse of God, the Celestial Virgin, the Heavenly Peacemaker, etc. Such pictures are not purely astronomical. They represent the male god and the female goddess as the sun and moon in conjunction, the union of the triad with the unit. The horns of the cow on the head of Isis have the same significance. And so above, below, outside, and inside, the Christian church, in the priestly garments, and the religious rites, we recognize the stamp of exoteric heathenism. On no subject within the wide range of human knowledge, has the world been more blinded or deceived with such persistent misrepresentation as on that of antiquity? Its hoary past and its religious faiths have been misrepresented and trampled under the feet of its successors. Its hierophants and prophets, Miste and Epopte, of the once sacred Adita, of the temple shown as demoniacs and devil worshippers, donned in the despoiled garments of the victim, the Christian priest now anathematizes the latter with rites and ceremonies which he has learned from the theurgists themselves. The Mosaic Bible is used as a weapon against the people who furnished it, 